In the Pali Canon, only one of them, which is the only uh, uh, account of, of the Buddha, there are many stories, dialogues, lectures. And one of them, or a number of them, he's been questioned by uh, philosophers of the day in India, which is India, 2,500 years ago, roughly. And they come up to him and they ask things like, is the world eternal? Or is there life after death? Or uh, is there an Atman, meaning is there an absolute uh, unchangeable self? Is there an Atman? Is there no self? The doctrine of the Buddha. And the Buddha maintains his silence. He doesn't say anything. And finally, uh, usually in these, in these dialogues, what happens is when the binocular leaves, you know, oh, well, this guy, you know, and, 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 and one of his disciples, usually an or one of the disciples comes to him and says, uh, why did you, why didn't you answer? He did said, he was looking for theories. I'm looking for a way to read himself. And this, I think, catches the essence of what Buddhism is. The Buddha asked a question in the ancient world that was uh, uh, unasked. When people were asking what is reality, the Buddha said, how do we experience the world? And what can be done about it? In other words, how is our awareness? What is our awareness of the world like? And he found that, in fact, many people were suffering. This is the first noble truth. And he realized that something could be done about it because a great deal of our suffering uh, comes from our own minds. And therefore, if it comes from our minds, we can change our minds, we can transform our minds, and we can answer them. And the Buddha did not believe in any, I, I actually said on a number of occasions, uh, you know, I want to follow any belief systems, so you don't have to believe what I said, just come and see. Come and see. See if it works. In other words, the emphasis was a fun process. The emphasis was on experiences. Today, we have with us a person who, in some ways, bridges the gap to Buddhism in a certain sense was a physician and also a practitioner of, uh, of meditation to solve the problems. And so we have today with us a man who is a neurologist, mm -hmm. MD from Harvard in 1945, Practicing neurologist, a clinical neurologist, also a scholar, is the author of over 140 articles. Who in 1974 went to Kyoto, Japan, and, 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 and actually began Zen practice. Zen is the form of Buddhism, it's the Mahayana branch that actually ended, uh, starts in China and uh, comes from India to China to Japan. It means meditation, it was that. And asked, in some ways, some way, the, the question that the Buddha asked. Which is, what is going on in the brain while I'm practicing meditation? And from this, we have really one of the pioneers in brain studies of uh, meditation, that's Dr. James Ryan. His books are uh, nationally and internationally known, Zen in the Brain, Zen Brain Reflections, Southwest Insight. A neurologist, a scientist who's also studying and actually a practitioner of meditation. This is a unique opportunity to hear a scientist who, as Jim has said, is going to take the mist out of mysticism. Although the clergy, I'm not sure he's going to take the schism out of mysticism. <laughs> but it is an honor and a privilege to have him here, and I welcome him to give the 2010 uh, Shipman Lecture in Religious Studies, Dr. James Dawson. So you have a backpack. You look like a student. I am indeed. Okay, cool. What drew you to this uh, Schiffman Lecture on Religious Studies today? I'm a philosophy and religion major. Philosophy and religion? Oh, okay. Uh, have you studied any particular Eastern uh, meditation systems before? I sure have. I've um, done some independent research in Buddhism as well as taken a few classes with Dr. Alioto. Oh, uh, yes, the great Dr. Alioto. 
I have met Dr. Austin. Okay. And, uh, we have something in common because my son is a neuroscientist. Oh, I see. And they've uh, had a chance to talk about that. Oh, great. So the two come together. That's right. As Zen and neuroscience. That's right. Great. All right. Well, thanks for coming to our lecture. Thank you. Yeah, I have his book and I've read a big portion of it. Um, okay. It's quite a fat book, so <laughs> not it, all of it. Uh, is it in the brain? brain? Yeah. Oh, okay, um, great. And I knew he was uh, local, and so when I found out about it, I thought it would be pretty interesting to hear him talk about it. Excellent. It's great to have you here. Um, are you interested in sort of the traditional mental cultivation, or are you also into the science aspects of it as well? Uh, definitely both. Okay. Um, I think they both need to be considered. They both have valid perspectives and good reasoning behind what they do and why they do it.